Hey everybody, it's Marvina, and I wanted to welcome you to my angel Q&A today. Today in my video, I had a question that came across from one of my clients who was having a really hard time with a Kundalini experience. And it was basically, it was a Kundalini activation, but it was kind of overkill. And so he was experiencing a lot of extreme uncomfortableness and intensity and uh, just really feeling like he was basically going to die. He felt very ungrounded and just the whole uh, experience was um, really scaring the hell out of him uh, to the point where he was having a really hard time at work and uh, taking care of his responsibilities at home with his family and his kids. So he wanted to know what he could do because he had been meditating regularly for a long time. He lives a very healthy lifestyle. So he's eating healthy. He is basically doing all the right things and meditating a minimum of two hours a day and um, felt you know really disenchanted that um, this awakening experience was really painful and uh, um, not what he expected so he asked me what to do about it and the first thing that we did was a complete soul clearing and then we kind of went over some things that he can um, do on um, uh, as an aside from that. So the soul clearing is the process of working with the archangels to go in and basically clear out any debris or any uh, concealed um, thought forms or programs or old patterns or behaviors or attachments to ways of thinking, living, doing, maybe even from other lifetimes. Uh, we might need to let go of attachments to old paradigms, old structures of worship, even relationships, but it's, it's a huge uh, undertaking. And the archangels are the one who cord coordinate everything. So they just lead me to the prayers and I just um, kind of uh, do whatever clearings that they give me the suggestion to do. And then you work with that clearing for a week. And I like to do it seven days as your initial activation. And then after that, uh, once a month, like on the full moon or the new moon for at least a year until things really shift for you. And uh, you'll know it because you'll feel different. You'll feel better. You may feel more grounded. You might feel... Um, more opportunities for relationships, opportunities to uh, connect to uh, greater prosperity streams and abundance. Um, it, it really affects us a lot of different levels. So this was the first thing that we did. And one of the reasons they really wanted to do that was for the protective shields uh, to get those in place. But as an aside from that, Oh, the major thing that came up for this person is uh, that he was very ungrounded. And that's one of the fallbacks of going through the ascension process, but not, but knowing a little bit, but not really diving deep into uh, what can happen and maybe what to do if you have a, um, a Kundalini blowout or a a chakra that is just full of debris and it's not allowing the kundalini to move through freely, what are some of the things that you can do? And that's why it is so important that we take the time to educate ourselves as much as possible about um, the chakra system and what is uh, what you might expect in the kundalini activation and the ascension process. So last summer, I did a whole bunch of videos, uh, at least 12, on the, the 12 major chakras and what types of issues 
might potentially be stored in those. So, and we don't always have issues in them, uh, but um, in those videos, I go over just some of the uh, the things that that could potentially be found in those chakras and how you can work towards clearing those chakras, uh, which Archangel would be helpful to ask to get some insight. Like for instance, if you feel like your heart chakra is blocked, then you might want to engage with a different angel or Archangel to help you clear out any issues in there. And even like minerals that can be supportive, uh, flowers, symbols that you can work with on each of these different chakras to help you get in there and do what needs to be done in order to uh, clear out the stuff. And that was the thing uh, with this person is that he still had some issues of a uh, past relationship, someone that he was very much in love with that let him down and disappointed him. And so there was just a lot of stuff on the sacral chakra and the root chakra, especially that were what, um, what I refer to as issues in the tissues. And they're just um, things that have happened to you in life that you had a charge on and that charge has coalesced into matter. And it's kind of like crystallized in your energy field on the chakras. And if you get enough um, charges with, with um, maybe different relationships that hurt your feelings or wounded you, and they, um, they kind of live in that area of the sacral chakra or the heart chakra. And if you get quite a few of those crystallized pieces of energy, sometimes they kind of um, coalesce together. And then you have like this big chunk of crystallized uh, energy that is uh, blocking anything from being able to flow through that center. So uh, the organs in our, our body that correspond to those chakras, they rely on a continuous supply of vibrant life force energy streaming in through those chakra centers. And if they're blocked, then we're not able to nurture the organs in the body and the bloodstream and all of the different systems that are pulling life force energy in for that purpose to, to run those systems. And so they're going to suffer. And after a while, your health is going to decline. And so that's just another good reason to work your personal pieces and deal with whatever issues are buried in your tissues. And as you start to do the healing work and you may need to adjust your lifestyle a little bit in the way you're running your thoughts um, about whatever disappointments, like you may need to uh, reframe things and you might need to change up uh, what you're eating and drinking, what you're exposing yourself to on a regular basis in order to get something different and uh, new and healing. A lot of times when we're going through that healing curve, it's like things might feel worse before they get better because as we're, um, we're engaging with that dismantling process, it may feel uncomfortable or icky or sticky or you may feel out of sorts. There's no end to what you might be experiencing, but it's so important that we be willing to um, push past our disappointments and, and do whatever work needs to be done so that we can come out on the, he the other side, vibrant and, and healthy and well. So when um, you start to have the, the um, you're working uh, your personal pieces and you're doing the meditation and you're asking for this uh, spiritual experience and this kundalini awakening and it starts to come up if it uh, say it's moving up into like through the root chakra into the the sacral chakra and it bumps up against something that has 
not been resolved through your processing or your clearing work, then you may feel um, you may feel some discomfort in that area. You may feel some heat. You may feel intensity. You might feel like um, there's like a, a sh like a, a blowout there. Uh, the way we experience this is is just the possibilities are unlimited. Uh, but they, um, some of the things that we can do when we have a particular chakra or an area of the body that we feel like just it's um, it feels tense or it feels like there's a lot of anxiety there is just meditate on that center or that organ in the body or that chakra and ask your own angels to give you some insight about what um, might be the uh, issue that's unresolved there. And I really believe that the universe abhors a void. And whenever I are to know the truth of the matter, your question, it goes out into the universe and the universe gives you the answer and it comes right back to you. And you may not want to um, believe it, or you may not want to trust yourself, or sometimes we're not willing to hear the truth of the matter. So it kind of like glances, it comes to us, but because we're in that frame of mind that we want to hear what we want to hear, then we don't see it for what it is. But I truly believe it will come to you and it'll just be an an insight or a knowing or an epiphany. You may see an image of a person. You might uh, be taken back to a place in time where something traumatic or dramatic happened to you. And so that's your clue. When you get your clue, you have to take the ball and run with it. And usually that means um, doing some work to call back your power from that person uh, call back any soul pieces that you might have left in that scene or with that person and do your very, very best to uh, forgive whoever hurt you or disappointed you or let you down. Sometimes we have to forgive ourselves for um, maybe foolishly trusting that person or foolishly making a choice that put us in danger or set us up for disappointment. So sometimes we have to forgive ourselves too, but do your very best to um, do the forgiveness work. And um, we really, it's like we have to truly mean it that we're willing to let go of our hate towards that person or our fear of that situation or those people involved or whatever it is, we have to just fully give it our attention and do our, our best to, um, to reframe it, look at it from a higher place, uh, get all of the value of whatever lessons are learned about mankind, about humanity, about um, whatever that we can, we can pull from that and integrate all of that that we can learn from it and call back our soul pieces, call back our power and, um, and then put that piece behind us. And as we're able to do that, the, um, the energy will be able to shift and we'll be able to let go and clear up those um, frozen uh, crystallized thought forms and the kundalini energy will help us and then the next time that um, we start to do our meditation or our activations or our ascension use our ascension tools and move that kundalini up we're going to be more likely able to allow it to move through that the um, root chakra and up through the sacral and on up into the higher chakras, it'll be smoother. And um, if it 
if it hits another like bump along the way, uh, don't get disappointed. Just realize that this is uh, something that it's our life work. Our life's work is to uh, do our ascension work and to activate and step up into our shining and into our beauty. So we want to, we're not going to uh, do it all in one day, usually. And uh, so we want to zen with it and just um, go through it piece by piece where the different chakras might be holding on to uh, different issues that for whatever reason, they were not processed whenever they first happened. So there's a lot of different tools that we, we can use to do that. And unfortunately, sometimes whenever we're such a fast tracker, like you are, this person that uh, asked this question, that are um, you're eating healthy and you have been for a long time. You're doing uh, spiritual exercises like yoga and meditation, and you have been for a long time and you really put in the elbow grease and you start to get those activations and the kundalini awakening, but there's still some pieces that are unresolved. Um, there are times when you may have to um, kind of what I call dumbing down your routine and um, maybe doing some things to ground uh, more. Um, so it, like instead of your normal meditation routine, your, your normal yoga routine, you might want to change it up a few times a week. If you're feeling really ungrounded and um, not stable and just having a really difficult time with the Kundalini, then do some different things. You have to change up your routine. And um, you may even need to, instead of eating healthy all the time, you might need to eat something that's a little more solid, like some peanut butter or something that will help you to ground yourself. I really recommend getting outside a lot, uh, doing some, some things, uh, outdoor activities are outstanding grounding uh, ways, tools, that you can use to help you stabilize yourself and ground that excess kundalini energy and um, and give yourself a chance to like heal and um, pull yourself back together again and uh, learn really good grounding uh, techniques like before and after every meditation. And for you, you might need to do some grounding visualizations before you go to sleep at night and when you get up in the morning. Uh, one of the techniques that is, is really powerful is just to imagine that you have a cord that is running down the back of your spine. And before you do your meditation, just imagine this like a silver cord, whatever color feels right to you, a golden cord or a silver just going straight down the back of your spine and just in your imagination, just push it down through the chair that you're sitting into and then just see it going down into the floor and on down into the ground beneath you and imagine it going through the sand, through the soils of the earth, deeper down into the earth, down through the gravel, the rocks and the stones pushing straight down into the core of the earth mother all the way down uh, through the boulders into the center of the earth. And when you get into the center of the earth, you just imagine that there is a giant boulder there or a giant tree, something that feels really substantial and just throw that cord around that tree and tie it off and just trust that etherically you are connected very solidly into the center of the earth and just you know use your imagination affirm that to yourself i'm grounded 
uh, very solidly into the core of the earth. And then with your mind's eye, just imagine yourself just kind of going hand over hand over hand and putting your hand on that cord and going, crawling back up through the center of the earth, through the lava and the boulders and the rocks, the stones, on up into the sand, through the soil, into the house, back into your chair, back into your body, and just know that you're very centered and grounded into the core of our Earth Mother. And another technique that um, is good whenever you, um, you get through with your meditation, I always like to have something to eat and drink uh, by, you know, in the room with me, like some crackers or a cookie, uh, so a glass of water or a glass of tea, something to eat and drink, because those two things together are, um, are just really good ways of helping you to kind of get all of your uh, dimensional cells like grounded back into this particular body because each and every one of us are very multi-dimensional. All of us are. And even if you don't have a metaphysical slash spiritual bone in your body, so you think you still are, you're multi-dimensional and we can function dimensionally. And we're just, I mean, we are made to do that, but um, sometimes we need to have some tools that we can go to to help us get grounded and to feel more secure, like um, we're not going to fall off the face of the earth because it is no fun being ungrounded. I have gone through that phase a few times and, um, you know, we, we don't all have to learn the hard way. That is the benefit of having someone that's been there, done that, that can say, hey, make sure you do this. Uh, when you meditate or when you feel ungrounded, here are some techniques. And so that way you don't have to like rewrite everything and go through all of um, all of these hard things yourself. Like you can take some of the suggestions that have helped other people and just go forward there. Um, one of the other things that is particularly helpful whenever um, you're coming out of a meditation is to, um, I always like to say my full name and my address, the street that I live on, uh, the city and the state, your zip code, even your phone number. Those are really good ways to help you uh, kind of get everything back into uh, this dimension so that you feel grounded. And then you're uh, more able to go about your day. If you ever get up from your meditation and you're like bumping into everything or you're tripping and falling down or you drop a glass or um, you're just, um, you know, having a hard time getting through the house, then you know that you had did not ground properly. So those are just some, some tools we all need a handful of tools that we can go to that can help us um, do what needs to be done so that we can go through this kundalini activation, this ascension process. Um, this is the time like um, our angels are calling us to get our butts busy and to um, do what needs to be done. We may need to This meditation takes us through the blue sapphire and the emerald jewel stargates. There are infinite stargates within a stargate network system. And each one of the stargates is a nexus point for the matrix structure within infinite matrices. And each matrix is an infinity. Today, I present to you two stargates at the celestial level that can be utilized for healing, for activation codes, for pathworking towards information 
and fifth dimensional Merkaba activation. They are emanations or holographical projections of other stargates, the crystal river of light projections that are your own activated crystalline pineal gland light sighting imagings are in direct alignment with the synopsis within your brain. The meridian structures of your body and the Lee lines and the energy vortexes within the planetary grids, they turn, they connect telepathically, energetically, and magically through gravitational fields called morphogenic fields. These morphogenic fields are gravitational electromagnetic forces of living crystalline structure. We refer to this entire network of grids, ley lines, meridians, and projections as the crystal river of light. They are one unified field, and what affects one affects all. It affects, creates effects as you will. When you utilize the power of your own crystal river of light through visualization, through pineal gland crystalline activation, and to connect with the imitations and the ray of jewel and gem light star codes, you fuse your DNA with the encoded star time capsules of Stargate and receive genetically encoded information. This encoded information is an immortality blueprint. So let us begin with the crystal river of light activation for the Emerald Stargate. The first thing that you want to do is visualize a beautiful star within the hyperspace world that is your inverse inner landscape. This star shines with a beautiful emerald light and it actually looks like an emerald in the sky. Within your hyperspace reality, you are able to fly into the cosmic sky and visit the stars. You can fly upon the Pegasus, the winged horse in the visualization, which represents your Merkaba vehicle, or you can grow your own wings through your imagination. And once you travel up to the star in the sky, you see there is a place where you join. You hold your hand up in front of the emerald star and you see the little filaments or cords of light coming from your hand and merging with emerald cords of light within the emerald ray of star. And once you do this, you see a shimmering emerald port portal open up within the middle of the star. You fly forward and you stand right in the center of the emerald star. You might visualize the green ray emanating from the center of the heart and it's emerging with the emerald ray of the stargate. You do not pass through this activated stargate. You can do this at any other time and see where the visualization might take you. But at this time, you are receiving codes for healing, for DNA reconstruction, and for information.